smoked as Lurch recalls. They kept feeding it to him. So much was given to him that it stood out as strange. The next thing he knew, he woke up in a jail with a murder charge two weeks later. He had no recollection of what happened during that time, claiming that the last thing he remembered before the murder was thinking that the war was ending and that he had to find and kill the devil. I mean, all I can remember, you know, the world was going to end and, and I had to find the devil and kill the devil before the world ended. That's, that's the last thought. The story goes that after getting high on PCP, Singleton kicked everyone out of the apartment, apart from him and Tanisha. He came behind her and struck her in the back of the head with a child scooter. Tanisha fell to the floor. Biglers then got on top of her with a knife and stabbed her in the chest multiple times before opening it wide open. He put his hand inside of it, ripping her ribs apart and exposing her internal organs. He grabbed her lung and started chewing on it. Multiple teeth marks were found across her face and lungs. Singleton then got up and ran outside into the street, naked. Tanisha's friend and neighbor, Alyssa Allen, saw Singleton running down the street naked through the window. This raised her concern, and she called the police. When the officers arrived and arrested Singleton, he was in the middle of the street, butt naked, barking like a dog and pulling his hair out. His body was covered in blood. Afterwards, they did a medical examination on him and found human flesh inside of his stomach that was from another person. He wasn't aware of his surroundings for a full two weeks. The trial began shortly after, and apart from obvious evidence found at the scene, the court got early access to his album, It's All Bad, and used the songs against him. The song that was used during the trial is called I Did It To You, in which he not only mentions multiple killers, but also sings, and all of your friends unfins to school you, cause murder is a hobby, I'm using a torture chamber, and not a ruger, so if you wake up in a puddle of blood, I did it to you. In the next verse, he also raps, When I was born, the doctor twisted up the facts. He said that I was a devil's son, so now I'm having flashbacks. The preacher almost drowned me at baptism, so on the 6th year anniversary of my birth, I had to get him. For the court, it wasn't so hard to find a link between his rhymes and the incident. The court used the songs as a blueprint for a murder. They claimed that Big Lurch was obsessed with this type of evil long before committing a crime. On November 7, 2003, jury deliberated for less than an hour and found Singleton guilty of first degree murder, torture and aggravated mayhem. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. But is this really what happened on that unfortunate night? According to victim's mother, Carolyn Stinson, she doesn't believe that Singleton did the murder. She seems to think that Tanisha's boyfriend at the time was the one that killed her. She sued the label claiming, But far as her boyfriend, he was a gay member. I believe he the one set all this up. He was beating on her. She had all her stuff packed, ready to leave the day all this happened. She believed that her daughter was murdered and had her chest torn open by her boyfriend and Singleton found her lung on the floor while being high on PCP and began to eat it, thinking it was a piece of meat. Victim's mother even went as far as visiting Singleton in jail and telling him she knows that he's innocent and forgiving him for the accident. But I'll never forget, you know, what happened to her. But yeah, I forgave him. I don't believe he done that. If I believe he probably was off on that PCP and... You know, he tripped. He saw that piece of lung lying on the floor and he, you know, probably figured it was a piece of meat or whatever. So he just took it and started chewing on it. But far as him, no, I don't believe that. Singleton, to nobody's surprise, echoed the claims that he's innocent, telling, they got me high on purpose to take advantage of me. They got me high on purpose to take advantage of me. This is where the story starts to get really creepy and interesting. Police did a medical examination of the victim's body and found PCP in her system. Her mother claimed that she didn't do any drugs and even if she did, the amount of PCP that was found in her system was at a lethal level. It wouldn't have been possible for her and Singleton to smoke that much. Singleton claimed that somebody poured down the bottle of PCP down to niches and his own throats and that they hadn't smoked it willingly. Somebody pulled it down, you know, the bottle was pulled down her throat because she had so much in her system, they said ain't no way she could have smoked that much. The murder was committed with a child scooter and a bloody handprint was found on it that didn't belong to Singleton. She got hit in the back of the neck with a uh, one of the little kids scooters because a handprint was on the scooter, bloody handprint, but they said they didn't know who that was. 
but it wasn't here. There were also bloody fingerprints and footprints in the house that did not belong to either of them. Singleton had a pitbull at the time, but that was never brought up during the court. The bite marks around the victim's body were never tested to see if they matched Singleton's teeth. This was all thanks to his attorney, who thought that claiming insanity would grant them a plea deal. As previously mentioned, he lived with gang members in the dope house. According to Singleton, all of the drugs and guns had been removed from the house prior to the incident. We don't figure out. We were heavily armed up in here, you know what I mean? We had all kind of guns up in here. But when the police hit the spot, there wasn't no guns up in there. There's evidence there like footprints, fingerprints on doors, you know, bloody fingerprints. You know, shoe at the back door, you know, and it's like... Where all this evidence go, it was DNA, who DNA was. They said DNA came up lost. What a strange coincidence, huh? If you think this is insane, wait till you hear his defense. As mentioned, Singleton was defended by his manager, Milton Grimes. He advised him to admit that he did it and to claim insanity, telling him that this way he would only get a couple of years and then he would be let free. Before the following sentence, I want to remind you ever get tired of being at the bottom of the top? that he wasn't just a random attorney from the street, he was a good, reputable lawyer. In California, you cannot claim insanity if you willingly took the substance that led you to commit the act you are on trial for. There needs to be at least one other factor such as underlying 